listening to Catholic Sprouts, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Thursday, March 14th, 2024. We are in the season of Lent talking about the heroic witness of martyrs. Today, we are talking about perhaps one of the most well-known, well-loved martyrs in our modern world, St. Maximilian Kolbe. I've told his story many times on this podcast, but it never gets old, and I'm excited to tell it again today. Before we do that, please join me in praying our Lenten prayer, St. Peter's Chains. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who caused St. Peter the Apostle to depart, loosed from his chains and unhurt, loose, we beg you, the chains of our sins, and graciously keep all evils far from us. Bless us this Lent and give us the faith of the martyrs. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Maximilian Kolbe. So St. Maximilian Kolbe was Polish. He was Franciscan. And he loved Mary. He was so dedicated to Mary. His relationship with Mary shaped his life. So St. Maximilian Kolbe answered a call to be a Franciscan friar. He was ordained a priest. As this, he served anyone in need, but he also spent a considerable amount of time promoting relationship with Mary because he knew, like many other saints, that the shortest and surest path to heaven was to Jesus through Mary. In fact, he often talked about the militia of the Immaculata, to be in the army of Mary, to have her as our guide and to be fighting for all the things that she fought for. So he promoted relationship with Mary through a newspaper. And then as technology increased through a radio station, he was a great leader and maker of things happening, oftentimes through divine providence. There are really remarkable stories of him having no money, no means, and God just miraculously supplying exactly what he needed, whether it was paper for his newspaper or a huge chunk of land to build a new monastery. He was incredibly faithful. He also had the heart of a missionary. He knew that Japan, although it had received the Catholic faith from St. Francis Xavier about three or 400 years before this, that there really had not been any missionaries sent there since then. So he was determined to do that. And in fact, he traveled to Japan as a missionary. When he returned back to Poland, however, he came back to a very war-torn and troubled country. The Nazis had invaded They controlled Poland. And when they realized that St. Maximilian Kolbe, who was the leader of his friary, when he would not cooperate with them, they arrested him and sent him to Auschwitz. Now, Auschwitz is a notorious death camp where Jews, but also Poles and many Catholics were sent to work and oftentimes to die. St. Maximilian Kolbe went there as a Catholic priest, and the records show that Catholic priests were notoriously treated the worst, that they were targeted, and that they were treated terribly. And yet people that were there with St. Maximilian Kolbe remember that he was always cheerful. He always encouraged that others eat before him, receive medical help before him, and he spent his nights crawling to the bedside of other people to hear their confession and to offer them Holy Eucharist. Although he did not have a church to celebrate Mass, he used small bits of bread that he could have in the quiet moments he could find to say Mass, to consecrate bread into the Holy Eucharist and to offer the true bread of life to those who were there with him. 
Now, as the story goes, one day in Auschwitz, a man succeeded in escaping. They searched for him, but they could not find him. And it was the common practice that if one man escaped from the camp, they would randomly select 10 others to die and to die in a terrible way. They were locked in a bunker and they were starved to death. And so as everyone stood in this big open space in Auschwitz, the Nazi officer went through randomly selecting 10 people to die. And he selected a Polish man. When he selected this man, this man shouted, I am a father and a husband. I cannot die. I need to return to my family. Moved with compassion for this man, whom St. Maximilian Kolbe did not know. He had never met him. But he was moved with compassion. He raised his hand and he spoke, offering to die in this man's place. And so St. Maximilian Kolbe willingly went to the starvation bunker where he, with nine others, was locked in without food for days and days and days. In fact, it took well over a week for them all to die. But Nazi officers have testified that when they would go into this starvation bunker, they did not feel like they were entering the starvation bunker. Instead, they felt as if they were entering a church. St. Maximilian Kolbe throughout this time led the others through prayer and singing, and he was the last to die. He died on August 14th, the day before the Assumption of Mary, So we like to believe that he died and he met his beloved mother, Mary, and that the very next day she took him with her when she assumed into heaven, along with the many other souls that had been faithful to her and through her, her son. St. Maximilian Kolbe has an incredible story. And when he was canonized by Pope St. John Paul II, he was named a martyr because he stepped forward and willingly died for this man. So let's all today, through the example of St. Maximilian Kolbe, evaluate our love for other people. Are we willing to suffer for other people? Sometimes we're not even willing to suffer for those in our family, those that we know and love. But St. Maximilian Kolbe was willing to suffer for a stranger. So let's pray through the intercession of Mary, the great mother of God, that we can see the needs and hurts of other people and that we can respond with generous love, generous love that is willing to suffer for them. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow, but until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Calling all Clubhouse members, get ready for our Virtues Chat with Sir Roland himself, the Dragon Slayer, this Thursday afternoon. We are going to be discussing the virtue of justice, and you aren't going to want to miss it. So Clubhouse members, make sure you join, log into the community, find the link. If you would like to join us, if you are not currently a member of the Clubhouse, then this is your special invitation to do that and seize on your opportunity to meet the Dragon Slayer in person. Just check the notes for this podcast episode to find the direct link to sign up to join and to be there on Thursday with Sir Roland. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit spokestreet.com.